In this video, we will explain how to measure the fluorescence lifetimes of your samples. At Edinburgh Instruments, we use time-correlated single photon counting, which is a highly precise single photon counting spectroscopic technique. To record the best TCSPC data, we first need a well-characterized sample. By measuring the absorption or excitation profile and the emission spectrum, we can decide which wavelengths to excite with and which wavelength to collect at. We expect a difference between the excitation and emission wavelength, known as the Stokes shift. To find the lifetime for this emissive population with TCSBC, we use a pulsed laser. The system works like a stopwatch. When the laser fires, a trigger start signal is sent to the electronics, which begins the counting. The beam follows the excitation path to excite the sample, which absorbs this wavelength of light and emits a photon. The emission is collected at 90 degrees to the excitation. The emitted photon hits the detector and is converted into an electronic signal. This acts to stop our stopwatch counting. What we record is the time between the trigger signal and the emitted photon. This time is logged in a histogram of counts against time called the fluorescence decay curve. One emitted photon is collected for each laser pulse. This means that the process must be repeated many thousands of times to build up a true statistical distribution for the sample. With this high resolution data, the curve can be mathematically fitted to extract the lifetime of the fluorophore or fluorophores. Keep an eye out for our next video on how to fit TCSPC data to find out more or learn more about TCSPC electronics here. Thanks for watching.